These are strange times that we're living in. Dealing with a pandemic, keeping our sanity in check while trying to work from home, glued to our tiny computer screens. But hey, you know what? Seeing is believing and without screens, we cannot see, we cannot connect to the outside world. Displays are the only invention we literally can't take our eyes away from, especially if we're locked at home. Nowadays, an average person spends more than 10 hours a day looking at screens, which is more time than you would spend genuinely looking to the eyes of your beloved. I know it's pretty scary, right? But we basically can't eat, date, drive, or survive our quarantine without having a 2D display being involved in the process somehow. These things are pretty much everywhere and they're climbing their way up to your face. I mean, we wanted shiny 3D projections like the one with Princess Leia in Star Wars, but instead we got these and, and these, which are uncomfortable to wear, somehow give you motion sickness, and, well, let's face it, are less whimsical and more like the face-hugging monster from the movie Alien. How did we end up here and why do we always have to wear something to experience 3D? And why even in 2020, 3D is not mainstream? Well, in order to answer those questions, you first have to understand how we perceive depth and how the display industry has evolved. There's a lot to unpack here, so this is going to be ridiculously but intentionally oversimplified. Okay, all right, so here we go. We understand depth based on several contextual and optical cues. Let's ignore the contextual cues and let's assume that your eyes are just two cameras mounted on your face. These cameras can change their angle and also focal length. The first optical cue is called parallax, which is a set of depth-dependent shifts observed at the images formed at the back of your left eye and right eye. Now, this happens because your two eyes look at the world from slightly two different angles. You can easily observe the effect of parallax with a simple experiment. For example, if you're watching, do this with me. Hold your thumbs up in front of your face like a thumbs up gesture and start winking your left eye and right eye sequentially. Can you see how your thumb jumps across the background? Well, that's parallax. All right, thanks for the thumbs up now. This parallax causes something in our brain called stereopsis, which sounds like a chronic disease my grandmother would have, but it's not. It's really the fundamental principle of pretty much any type of 3D that you've experienced so far in the display world. I like to refer to this type of 3D as parallax-based 3D or stereoscopic 3D or shallow 3D. The second lesser talked about depth cue is called monocular depth or single eye depth and it relates to the focal length of each eye lens. It's easy to observe the effect of this type of depth cue through the blurring of the background when your eyes focus at the foreground and vice versa. You can also capture this easily with a camera. For example, here we have six letters TEDx KC positioned at six different distances from the camera. And as you can see, when the cameras focus on the letter T at the foreground, the letter C at the background goes blurry. And when the camera changes its focus and puts it on the letter C at the background, the letter T at the foreground goes blurry. Unlike parallax that is created because of slight angle differences between your left eye and right eye, this type of blur happens because of much finer, about 100 times finer, angle-dependent variations of light across the diameter of single eye lens. Objects that are closer have more of these angular variations across the, uh, the each eye pupil compared to objects that are further away. This monocular depth is pretty hard to emulate and current 3D displays don't have much of it. Nonetheless, it's very essential to your vision. In fact, almost all the prescription glasses are made to correct for this type of depth cue so your eyes can focus at different depths correctly. If we could somehow make a display with monocular depth, then that display would let your eyes choose whatever distance it wants to focus on in the scene. So you could go and sit right next to this display and look at the moon in the scene just the way you go and sit right next to a window and look at the moon in the night sky. What's really important here is that just like the window, the closer you get to this type of display, the more of the outside world you can see. And the size of the outside world that you can see can be infinitely larger than the size of the window itself. That's not the case with conventional shallow 3D or 2D screens. If you have a 32-inch screen, well, 
32 inches is all you're going to get, regardless of your distance from the screen. And that's because the monocular depth of that display is snapped on to the frame of the display itself. I like to refer to this type of 3D as deep 3D, because it represents the way we understand the 3D in the real world better. All right, so we covered depth, now let's talk about displays. So, 93 years ago, we started representing this complex 3D world on a flat 2D screen with an array of tiny lamps we call pixels. Since then, we have added color to these lamps, we have made them thinner and brighter and faster, and increased their numbers dramatically. And we've been pretty good at that. In fact, this year, with upcoming 8K, the resolution of the screens is surpassing the maximum resolution our eyes can possibly see in most settings. But whenever we try to change the directionality of the light from each of these lamps to create some sort of stereopsis, we fail to get compelling results. In fact, we have been failing even to get proper shallow 3D for decades because of three major bottlenecks. Bandwidth and lack of content, poor image quality, and poor depth quality. Bandwidth is all about the sheer amount of information that you have to show. If instead of one image, now you have to show two images, one for the left eye and one for the right eye, then presumably your bandwidth has to be doubled. And this notable increase in the bandwidth is just not worth the shallow depth perception in a lot of applications. After all, 2D is pretty much flawless for uh, reading text and such. Luckily, with upcoming 5G communication networks, 8K and AI-based technologies, we can transmit data 100 times faster, we can show four times more pixels than current 4K, and we can compress and reconstruct 3D data much more effectively. The second bottleneck is poor image quality that we have seen with all sorts of 3D. And this is because the fact that our 3D display technology has always been a derivative of 2D display technology. For example, VR headsets are a couple of flat 2D screens with lens on top. IMAX 3D is two 2D projectors with a polarized glass on your face. And these glasses and optics usually degrade the image quality. There is a wave of nano-optics that is emerging that can help here, but this is still a work in progress. The third bottleneck is depth quality. As I mentioned, not all depths are created equal. What we have seen so far has been shallow stereoscopic 3D. So today, for the first time, I want to show you a display with deep monocular depth. All right, so here we have a little uh, prototype for you. And as you can see, the image is visible up here. And the camera is picking up about one meter of monocular depth from this display. And just like the real world, the camera can choose what depth to focus on in the depth of this image. Now, this is quite a mind-bending experience because the amount of depth that this display is showing is seven times deeper than the thickness of the display itself. So if you were to put this next to a wall, it would look like you have a tunnel going deep into the wall. All right, great, very exciting. So now that we are opening up these bottlenecks one by one, are we going to have Star Wars-like 3D projections anytime soon? Well, scientifically, no, and we don't need to. What we're gonna have is going to be much better than that, and it's more like the Star Trek holodeck. This prototype here is actually like one tile from the Star Trek holodeck. So if you were to have enough of these to tile the four walls, the ceiling and the floor, then presumably you would have the elements necessary to create a holodeck-like experience. I wanna pause for a second and tell you that this is huge. Because before we even get to holodeck-like experiences, even a small sliver of this technology can completely disrupt the way we experience digital media. For starters, with this technology, now we can have a massive virtual monitor that is created by a small device like this. There's no need for headgears anymore, and you get this large panoramic volume that curves in front of you. With work from home on the rise, Everybody's familiar with the eye strain of reading fine print text on a small screen. That's why some people have multi-monitor setups or larger curved display. Well, with Deep3D, you can replace multi-monitor setups 
and adapt the curvature and depth of the image to your liking to relax your eyes or even exercise your eyes. Obviously, I wouldn't be talking about this if you actually haven't built such a device. So here's the first glimpse of how that experience will look like. It's quite a surreal experience. It almost feels like you have a virtual window going to a different world sitting on your desk. And I can't wait to tell you more about this in the future. Seeing is believing. And in order to make believable experiences, the display industry has come a long way. This pandemic has shown us once again that our technology is still far from replacing real life experiences. We might have failed with shallow 3D and with 8K, we might be reaching the end of the resolution race for 2D. But I hope I've convinced you today that there's a new race just getting started in this industry, the race to go beyond screens and into the depth. Thank you.